What are retained earnings and where do they come from and where do you even find it? Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Charlie Marr and in today's video, we're going to go over a small section that you can find inside the balance sheet by the shareholder's equity known as retained earnings. Before I get into it, let me show you where you'll see it in some websites when you're looking at the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and head over to Google and here you can see that I have open Seeking Alpha and we're inside the, uh, inside the balance sheet of Apple. So you can see here we're inside the balance sheet. Let me move myself out of the way. If we were to scroll all the way down by the equities section, here it is, total equity, total common equity. Right above that, you'll see this little line here, this little roll called retained earnings. And you can see those numbers here. This is seeking alpha. Let me show you how it looks on another place like ticker. So here's ticker. We're inside the company Charles and Covard. If we scroll down, go into their balance sheet, again, all the way to the bottom, you'll see their equities, and here it is, retained earnings. In this case, it's actually negative or red. So what does this mean? Let me give you the definition that is given to you by Investopedia. So what are retained earnings? Retained earnings are an important concept in accounting. The term refers to historical profits earned by a company minus any dividends it's paid in the past. The word retained captures the fact that because those earnings were not paid out to shareholders as dividends, they were instead retained by the company. For this reason, retained earnings decrease when a company either loses money or pays dividends and increases when new profits are created. So I'm going to now go ahead and go over examples, but first let's talk a little bit more about it. So let's go ahead and go on here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you a little bit about this. So again, where is this? You'll find it inside the balance sheet. So inside the balance sheet, you'll find retained earnings. What is it? So it's practically accumulated profits. And what it's coming from the net profits plus net losses minus dividends. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what's the difference between um, retained earnings and net income? Well, the difference is that net income is temporary. So net income is only within a given period or a time frame. For example, um, what is the net income for the quarter? What is the net income for the year? From year one to year two, it resets. You made $10,000 in year one. Year two, maybe you increase and you made 20,000, but it reset. You made 20 in one year, 10 in one year. You know, it's constant reset. On the other hand, with the retained earnings, it's practically how much it's all combined since inception. So since you started the company or business. Um, so that's pretty much the difference in how all that works. Um, there's a couple things that... Um, affect it and let me go ahead and show you those real quick um one second got a message here okay that's fine anyways so let's go ahead and show you what these uh what the, this what uh what affects this um let me go ahead and remove this uh clear this one out there you go so what affects the retained earnings affect Sorry, my E's always look like C's. <laughs> I might have terrible writing throughout this whole thing. So the first thing is obviously net income. So that's one thing that changes and moves that number around. It's the net income. And this is usually, oh, it's obviously a plus. So this is an addition. The other thing would be net losses. So net losses is the other thing that affects this. And this is usually a negative number. The last one is dividends, and that's obviously a negative number as well. Dividends. And of course, that is a negative number. So just to give you some little examples within dividends, like something that affects it, for example, one of them is uh, paying back in stock, so paying dividend out in form of stock. The other one would be in cash, so paying out uh, dividends in, in form of cash. And then the third one would be something known as a script or like an IOU. Um, so script or IOU. So it's practically it's practically like um, so instead of paying you out the dividend now, it's like hey we'll pay you, we'll owe you this money in the future. So that's something that's going to be included, but it's it's affecting it. Um, and then the last one would be a property. 
property. So that's everything that affects and changes the number of the retained earnings. Now, there is little things that like adjustments that could be made. Um, and it's not something we're going to cover so much, but it is something to just have in mind. So adjust mints can also be made to these retained earnings and to give you an idea just in case there was ever an error so if they look back and they were like wow we made a mistake we our math didn't add up or like we missed something then that's something that will also affect it but that's an adjustment the other one would be like when you reorganize reorganize or reorganization reorganize oh, i cannot whatever I can't write. Um, so those are things that, those are adjustments that could be made, but we're not gonna focus on that. And this is overall what affects the actual retained earnings. Now, let's go ahead and go over some actual, um, just e examples and like uh, an actual like business type of example. So I'm gonna pretend that I opened up a company called Charlie's Fresh Lemonade. So let's go ahead and put the title of my new business, Charlie's Fresh Lemonade on the top. Um, I ordered DoorDash, my food's here. Charlie's Fresh Lemonade. So that's our new business. And at the top right, I'm just gonna write example because this is just like an example of how the numbers work. So you guys just, I guess, remember that this is overall an example. Um, now there are, um, we're gonna create like our own balance sheet practically. And what this will show you, it'll give you an idea and you'll, you'll see, you'll visually have an understanding of how retained earnings is affected and how it changes and how it all moves around. So let's start creating like a fake balance sheets and it'll just be like five years so it'll be pretty easy and like like i said you'll really understand it so let's go ahead and and, and the first thing is the year so this is going to be the year and then we're going to have four more lines here let's go ahead and write those up the so the year and then we have our net income so let's go ahead and write that in here net Income, remember that's one of the things that changes the retained earnings or losses, which I'm just going to put in parentheses. So net income or net loss. The other one is dividends. Dividends. And then the last one is actual the actual result. So once you add up all these things, which is the retained earnings. Retained. Um, I guess I can spell it on this side. Earnings. Um, one thing I will say is, so when the number is a positive number, so let's just say the res this results in a thousand, that is technically the retained earnings. That's technically RE for retained earnings. When the number is negative, that can usually be, uh, it can be called accumulated deficit. Um, so if, let's just give you an example. So let's just say instead of 1000, they showed a negative number and it was negative 2000. Well, this would actually technically be referred to as accumulated deficit. Um, but overall, when you're looking at the balance sheet, you always see it as retained earnings. And sometimes they have different names. I think other countries call it different names, which maybe in the future I'll kind of give you the overall names that they use. Um, so yeah, so that's just something to remember. Um, and again, just, just again, when you see a number like this, that's a positive. When you see it within parentheses, that is a negative, and sometimes you will see that number. Now it's going to change the color to red, but I'm just going to—I'm not going to do color code. It'll be easier for me to write everything. Um, so, um, yeah, so when it's in parentheses, it's in—it's—it's it's loss or it's—it's it's negative. Um, so let's go ahead and go over some real life examples. I just opened Charlie's Fresh Lemonade, and let's just say it's 2020. So this is our first year we opened in 2020. Let's just say our net income or net loss, we took a loss for the first year was 40,000. So it's gonna be in parentheses. We took a $40,000 loss. This is new, we don't plan to pay any dividend and for the sake of this, let's just say we don't pay out any dividends. So let's just say that's zero, okay? So that means that our retained earnings is actually 40. Thousand. And in this case, it's a negative number. So technically, it's called a uh, accumulated deficit. So we don't really have to pay attention to that, but I'm going to put it on the side just so you have an idea. Um, and actually, you know what? Let's just not do that. Just remember that, that when it's a negative number, it's an accumulated deficit. And when it's positive, it's retained earnings. But overall, when you have the word retained earnings on the side, like, and you're looking at the columns, 
it's all going to be retained earnings. But just think if you want to use the proper uh, terminology, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Cool. So that's the first year. Let's go on to the second year. Let's just say we move on to 2021. And this time we take another loss, but it's a $60,000 loss. And again, we pay no dividend. Well, all we have to do is because this is accumulated or this is since inception, it's the retained earnings. Well, now it's a loss. Um, uh, it adds up. So we're going to pretty much add these up. So it's 40,000 plus, well, negative, minus 60,000 minus 40,000. So this is now 100,000. That is our new retained earnings for that time. Now let's go on to, to the next year. Let's say now it's, the year, now it's the third year and we're in 20. 22 but let's just say this time around we actually profit like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so we end up in the green a hundred and fifty thousand and let me make that a little bit nicer because it might not look like a comma there a hundred and fifty thousand and let's just say again we don't pay any dividends well what does that math equal to well we're negative a hundred thousand so if we add a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to our negative previous number we're now looking at fifty thousand dollars and it's positive. Now, in this case, like I said, this would technically be called the retained earnings, not the deficit one. But we're not going to put that in just to not mess it up. So you see how it's all adding up? Notice how the net income is constantly resetting and changing what we did for that year, for that quarter. And in the retained earnings, it's actually just summing it all up. So you can see the whole, the overall preview, I guess, or the screenshot of the whole thing, the accumulated. Um, now, let's just move on to year four. So let's go back. Let's just say now it's 2023. And let's say that this time we lose another 60,000. Just to give you another example and go through all the like, type of things that could happen. So let's just say we lose 60,000 again this year. We had a bad year and we didn't pay a dividend again. Um, so that means that if we were to do that, so that's 50,000 in the green minus 60,000, that leaves us at 10,000. So that would be negative 10,000. Is this all making sense? Now let's move on to the final year. Let's say Charlie's Fresh Lemonade is now, since inception, going to be open for five years. That would move us into 2024. So 2024. Let's say that this time we had our best year ever. We just, I don't know, we did very well and we did $250,000 in the green, so plus. So $250,000. But this time, let's just say that we did so well that we actually plan to pay out a dividend. We wanna pay back our stockholders, our shareholders, our investors, you name it. And let's just say that we pay out $50,000. So in the dividends, you'll see $50,000 that was paid out. So if we were to grab our negative number that we had here, I don't know if you can see my mouse. If we grab our negative number and we were to add 250000 and then subtract our dividend. Remember in the beginning, it's net income minus net losses and all that. Like we're, we're adding it all minus dividend. That means that at the end, it would leave us at, what is that, uh, 190? At 190000 in the green, or in this case, it's a plus. And that's pretty much it. And again, technically, this is the retained earnings. Um, and just remember when it's negative, it's accumulated deficit, retained earnings, uh, accumulated deficit and accumulated deficit. But overall, you can all consider it uh, retained earnings. Um, so yeah, that is a live example of how that works. So you can technically see how a business is doing and how it's all going overall. Um, the only thing, other things to keep in mind is depending, it depends, um, I'm going to keep it up here for like a second and I'm going to erase it. If you want to take a screenshot or do whatever you want to do to kind of know how it works. Um, this was a very dumbed down version, but I believe you'll have a very good understanding how retained earnings now works and where it's all coming from. That's my dog, Char Charlie. He's been doing that the whole time in the background, hasn't he? Um, anyways, so the last thing I'm going to say before I end the video is It'll give you an idea of where the business is and more or less what it's making and everything, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. So for example, um, if, you're looking, if, you're, if you're looking at a company based on liquidation value and you're seeing their um, retained earnings like 
negative or go going really red. So they keep losing and losing more money. And after five years, it's accumulated in, I don't know, in, in, in $200,000 in losses. Well, there's also so much other things that you can, again, if you're looking at the liquidation version um, uh, value of this, the liquidation value of the company, even if they have a, uh, if they've been accumulating a very high uh, accumulated deficit, in this case, or retained earning is negative. I mean, if you were to sell the company and liquidate everything, there still might be money left over for shareholders. But it's still an important thing to do. In other words, when you're looking at, at one that's increasing and over time you just see it growing and growing and they're not retaining much, uh, or the retaining is accumulating in a positive number, then it's it's a bonus. You know, I mean, you would feel a little more comfortable as a shareholder knowing that they've been making more and more and more since inception. Um, other things to keep an eye out just before I end the video is just uh, maybe if they reorganized or if they made any adjustments or stuff, but most times uh, you won't maybe see that um, or you'll be aware of it. But anyways, that's it for that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to give me a like, make sure to comment below and make sure to share the video. All that will just give me confidence and it'll make me very happy. You will also get good luck if you like this video and share it and comment and do all those things. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys on the next video and I hope you learned something on this one.